So we're going to want to think of what view models we will require. What models do we need to represent functional views the user interacts with? One of these is going to be a product view model. And we need a view model to represent the observable items, something to manipulate quantity and item information. So our product view model is if you think of a vending machine, you have your rows. And in your rows, it has a collection of specific items. So the first row may be all of regular cola. The second row may be all of diet cola. So our product view model is essentially going to represent these views. Next, we're going to need a payment view model. So we need another object to represent observable interactions purchasing items. So the payment view model essentially is going to be the object we interact with with inserting change and collecting uh, payments and then even retrieving payments. Lastly, we need an object to represent the machine as a whole to manipulate other view models it contains, ones like we previously mentioned above. So the machine view model is just going to encapsulate the other two view models we created and it's essentially going to be the center hub of our application. So with that brief overview, we're going to run over to Visual Studio and start creating our application. Okay, so now that we're back to our application or our project, uh, we're going to create view models. But before we do that, we're going to create a new class that's called Observable Object and we need all of our view models to be derived from this class so when we update properties we can display that to the user so in a, here in our designer we have regular cola and diet cola that'll show the inventory and if it's 10 it'll display but let's say we dispense uh, a regular cola and now we only have nine we need to notify the view that this is changed and same goes for inserted or receiving change or refilling and emptying our supply so to do that we're going to go to our project add class and notice we're not putting it in a folder this is going to be in the root of our project and we're going to name this observable object Okay, uh, I gotta fix one little error and I'll be right back. You shouldn't get this error though. Okay, I'm back and uh, that error was on my part from preparing for doing this video. So it was sitting in the folder, but it, I deleted it in the solution, but it wasn't really gone, but whatever. Regardless, it's fixed now. So I created uh, the observable object class, which you need to go and create. And then when we come in here, going to create a public class and this class needs to inherit the I notify property changed interface so we'll type in I notify property changed and off the bat we're not going it's not going to recognize this so we need to hit control period and we can add in our using system dot component model as you see here you could type it in as well then we're going to continue to have an error because now we need to implement the interface. So if we hover over it, we can go to show potential fixes and then click implement interface. And now we'll get our public event. Now we need to be able to call when a property is changed. So we're going to create a public void. We're going to call it on property changed and it will be passed a string value we will call prop which is going to be the property name that is being changed then we're going to check if property changed does not equal null then we're going to get our property changed event pass it this class and then pass it a new property changed event args with the prop parameter which will contain the property name. 
So now that we have this, when we create a view model, and if it's derived from observable object, it's going, we're going to be able to update and notify when the properties change. So we'll go over to our view models now, right click and go to class. And first we're going to create a product view model. Then add. Now in our product view model, we're going to make it public. And like we created, we're going to have it be derived from our observable object. So first thing we need is a model. Whoops. Is the model the product view model represents. So we're going to have a private vending item which it's not going to recognize this excuse me recognize this so we need to hit control period and enter in our using vending machine tutorial models namespace okay then we're going to name this underscore model then next we want to create the maximum number of items allowed in this view model And we're going to create this as a private constant integer. We will name it max quantity. And this will be set to 10. So whatever we set this is the maximum amount of items that can be held in the product view model. Then we are going to create a current amount in the view model. So the current quantity. This will be a private int quantity. So this field here will represent the not uh, instead of the max quantity, it's going to represent the actual current qu quantity we have. So now that we have this, uh, since it's our view model, uh, this is going to be what our view is depending on for displaying information. So we do need to make some things public. So first thing we're going to do is create a public int called id. Then get, and this is going to return the model id. Next, we're going to create another public int called quantity. And this is going to return the current quantity that we have above, which is private. So this will allow us to access how much we currently have in this view model. Then we also want to be able to set this. So we're going to call our set and quantity equals value. But we're going to go over to our set real quick and this is going to be a private set. So the quantity can only be set in this class, but we can obtain it outside of it. Next, we're going to have a formatted display message of this product's inventory count. So this is going to be in our manager menu where basically it's going to say what item it is and how much of it we have. So we're going to call this public string inventory display we're going to say get and here we are going to return our model name plus a colon with this space plus our quantity and actually I'm going to create a little comment up here formatted display message this product quantity and then we're going to give an example of what we expect this message to look like so regular soda we'll say seven okay next we want to for outside the class or for our view we want to be able to obtain specific information such as its name and price so that can be displayed to the user. And instead of making individual properties for name and price, 
I'm going to make it so we can just retrieve all the model information. So if we later down the road need more information, we don't need to create more properties. So here I'm going to return a copy of return a copy of this model values. So here we're going to have public vending item call it information and get so this will simply return the model if we need to access any more information and I will scroll down a bit here now next we need to display a out-of-stock message if we no longer have a quantity greater than zero determine if we need to display an out of stock message which is a uh, if you followed the first video it is a text block that we currently have its visibility set to hidden so we want to be able to bind to the uh, visibility of this view model so we're going to say public visibility whoops visibility and it's not going to recognize it so we have to hit control period and enter in our using system windows namespace and we will name this out of stock message and here we're going to get and if our quantity is greater than zero then obviously we are going to return visibility dot whoops it's actually going to be hidden so if we do have items, this will not be displayed. However, if our quantity is not greater than zero, then we're going to have a visibility hidden. So this will basically, as our quantity updates, it's going to update our out of stock message, which we will be implementing the on property changes soon, but I'm saving that for last. So now since uh, this is our product view model, you'll remember if we go back to our vending item, uh, we need this information to create a model, which we have defined above here. So when we create a product view model, we are going to need to give it specific information so it can instantiate that view model, or the, not the view model, but the vending item model. So here we're going to type CTOR tab tab quickly create a constructor for us and this constructor is going to need to have a int ID parameter a string name parameter and a double price parameter then when we create our view model we can create its model for it so a new vending item and simply pass it its uh, ID name and price and by default we will have a quantity of zero so now we can actually start creating methods that we will access when we display uh, or when we change the display or dispense or refill items. So down here, going to do a public int, and I'll explain why we're returning an integer in a second. It's going to be called refill, and we're going to say bar amount equals max quantity minus quantity. So this will by doing this, by getting our max quantity and subtracting the current quantity, we're going to get the amount that is left to fill. So then we're going to say quantity plus equals amount. So we're going to fill the amount that is available. And then we are going to return the amount. And the reason we're returning the amount is so uh, whatever outside object calls this refill, it'll return the integer if we need that information. So if we need to know that 
we refilled, but we also want return the amount that we refilled of the item. And actually, if you go up here, I have a little typo, so let me change that. Inventory display is what that should be. I hope uh, if you're following along with me, you caught that. But next, we also need a public int called empty. And we're essentially going to do the opposite of what we did above for refill. So we're going to create a var amount. Then we're going to say, uh, actually, the var amount is going to equal our quantity. And then we're going to set our quantity to zero. And we do this so we can have, uh, since we're returning an integer, we're going to return the amount. So since we're getting rid of everything, we want to be able to, before we set it to zero, we want to be able to return the amount that we removed, which is why we set a new, uh, a new integer to be returned. Lastly, we want to create uh, an object, or not rather, an object uh, next we're going to want to create a method for dispensing an object from this product view model. So we want to be able to dispense items as we purchase them. So we want to do a public pool dispense. Well, sorry, I should probably scroll a bit. So public pool dispense, and we're doing a pool so we can return again to the outside who's calling this, whether or not this dispense was successful. So we're going to call it dispense, and we're going to check our quantity. So if our quantity is greater than zero, then we can deduct one from our quantity by doing quantity minus minus, and we can return true. However, if the quantity is less than or equal to zero, then we will simply return false. So it'll basically say that, no, we couldn't dispense this.